so let's well keeping with hip-hop i should say let's uh move on to uh an anime uh, sorry a, a new anime series called yasuke which um in its own way owes a lot to to hip-hop or i should say just to kick things off um the influence of 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 hip-hop on anime and value and, and vice versa right so i'll just share my synopsis and then um you'll get to your opinion and then i'll get to mine right so yeah um this was a show that i i was keeping my my, my eye on for a few months so i actually saw a still of the of the show i think it was um I think it was Shadow and Act. I think it was that website that actually put it up for the, for the first time. It's like, oh my God, new anime, you know what I mean? Uh, with the main character being voiced by Lakeith Stanfield, you know what I mean? It's about the the touted black samurai, right? Called Yasuke, you know? So they're like, okay, okay. And then the first trailer dropped and, uh, from Netflix and it's like, okay, this, this is pretty cool. But the thing that caught me now by surprise was the name Flying Lotus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I saw that, I was like, Okay, this 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 could be something. I'm not sure what it's gonna be, but it could be something, right? Um, and well, just the little big little detour here uh, for both of us. Uh, we 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 quite enjoy uh, Flying Lotus's music, right? I wouldn't yeah. say that I am knowledgeable in all of his songs, all of his entire discography. Yeah. I haven't even seen that um, that that feature film that he made <laughs> a few years back that that okay. freaked people out. I haven't seen that as yet, but. Um, in terms of like his work in terms of not so much hip-hop but more like vapor weave chill weave you know like right. electronic music basically i would if, say that he is one of the top producers in the game right now he always finds these just just these creative ways to make these really hypnotic very moody very you know um yeah that, that's what i'll use very 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 moody very you know um beats right. i mean it just puts you in this particular vibe and you know i really dug what he did on you know um to Pippa butterfly you know i mean best album of the decade in my opinion and yeah i mean i was just surprised to as i said to see his his name show up on uh material like this sir. but i'll explain how why why i should not have been surprised in the first place and how it works in the overall context of the show itself right um, but yeah, what the show is about, it's, and this is something that I didn't even know going in, but I, once again, I should have been, I shouldn't have been surprised, right? So you get like this alternate reality version of, um, of Japan basically, right? right? And we open with what was a real event, but basically it's, um, with this Lord, his name is Oda Nobu, Nobu Na- Naga, um, yeah. Naga, right? All right. So and, yeah, I, yeah. I, um, I'm mostly knowledgeable about this because I play the video game Neo almost religiously, <laughs> um. Oh, so Neo like, is like based I, off of that. Oh, well, no, Neo is based off. Yeah, but Neo is based off of not. Well, yeah, a lot of it focuses on Nobunaga to action. Um, right. It's mostly yeah. It's mostly that whole you know history and yeah. Yasuke is a character in the storyline and you can play with him. Well, you can okay. play as a model, you can play as a model of him, right? Right. Uh, yeah. Um, here's the thing with this, right? I the thing is both have a similar situation in terms of thinking about how you should deal with um fantasy story versus history right and yeah. neo neo is a pretty good story right for what it was especially the second game um but it's still a decent story and but it does a lot of magical storytelling within a realistic historical backdrop and we're gonna get into this where i felt when neo succeeds this doesn't succeed as well um, but yeah, like talk yeah. about. I, 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 I'm, I actually, actually have a feeling we will agree with that, with that regard. On, right. on that regard, sorry. So yeah, yeah so basically, um, what happens is that um, yes, yeah, so we we learned early on. We, we actually learned in the first couple of episodes that um, he was a servant to this um, Jesuit missionary, right? Yeah. And exactly. through some circumstances, he you know pretty much brings him into his fold, right? So he becomes official soldier, or I should say, a samurai for him, right? Of course, there's, you know, the, 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 the people who don't like the fact that he's black and, you know, why are you, you know, treating this guy who's not even part of our clan with respect and all that kind of stuff. And even Merit, too, with a, with a character who, honestly, I felt they should have focused a lot more on, um, that would be Natsumaru, right, who is voiced in English. Because yes, I have a Japanese and English dub, but I stuck with the with the English dub. Because when I heard the first bit of Japanese, I was like, okay, I get it, just but or oh, here, Lakitna, you know what I mean? But I didn't expect yeah, her to I, um, a girl, uh, Ming Na Wen in it, so yeah, she plays that character. Right, yeah, I listen to the Japanese because I'm, you know, dub versus sub, I'm a, I'm a dub guy, right? Uh, All right, sorry, I'm, a, I'm a sub, I'm a sub oh, guy. You're, you're, you're a sub. I'm, I'm, a, a, sub. I'm, a, I'm a sub, but alright, well, I'll see it as like, 
if it's only available in Japanese, I'll watch it in Japanese. I know it has some people who can't watch anime unless it's in English, but now I'll watch it in Japanese. And when, if yeah. I really enjoy it, I'll watch it over in English. I'll be like, okay, dubs not half bad, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. you know? yeah for, me, for me, subs, I prefer subs on average. The Japanese original voices is really good because the guy who they have for, uh, I think I was actually pretty shocked they got a black actor for the Japanese voice, right? Uh, oh, good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like he's a real popular Japanese voice actor. Not too popular, but he did. He's a he's a popular Japanese actor. Like one of the, like I don't know, two <laughs> black actors in Japan. Um, but yeah, they got this guy for the Japanese voice actor, and he's pretty good at it as well. Um, right. So I, I listened to it in Japanese entirely. Uh, okay. For what it was. Um, oh. Right. So eventually, of course, Nobunaga dies. He performs seppuku because you know he's yeah. about to be defeated by this um, rival, you know, um, warlord basically. And then we cut to 20 years later, and basically he is just this wanderer, right? You know, his hair is longer, um, you know, he just altered himself. And we, we meet him in this town, and, you know, he's, well, he's basically this boatsman, right? So, yeah. transport people from over this lake, right? And they, 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 they call him the black boatsman. I was making this joke in my head, like, you know, call me black boatsman one more time, eh? Come yeah. Come on down one more time. <laughs> but, yeah, that's what he's referred to, right? Um... He has a name, but it's um, Yasan, right? That's that's what they call well, him. They well, don't Yasan know him is, as Yasan. Yeah. You know, Yasan okay, okay. Is, so in Japanese, yeah. it's... Oh, oh, yeah. oh. Duh. No, it's, it's right. San. It's San. It's San. It's, it's San. Yeah. All right. Duh. Right, yeah. Yeah. So he runs into this girl. Well, actually, he kind of runs into her basically through the singer who um, more or less does her work in this, um, this pub, basically. And um, these... Sp- I should say magical powered, with the exception of one person or one being. Well, actually, it's a mech. Um, yeah. I was yeah, and it's actually like established that it's not like a man inside the mech. It's actually a robot, like just yeah. doing its stuff, right? And they hired by this um, Catholic um, Catholic priest, basically, yeah. because the girl has powers, right? Has mystical powers, and he also has mystical powers as well. And yeah. he has like these ulterior motives with the girl, right? So through some circumstances, um, you know, one thing leads to the next. And eventually, um, she well, eventually she hires um, Yasuke basically to take her to this particular doctor. But the doctor himself was both a soldier back in the wars that took place with um, Nobunaga, um, and he's a rebel basically because he's going up against this evil daimyo. But the thing is with this show here, like you're thinking, like the daimyo is like this big. You, you, you take it like it's an actual person, but it's actually this demonic spirit and. Right actually she has you know her designs on the country and what she wants to do with it right so she is willing to wipe any anybody who comes in the way but in particular she wants that girl because again girl has powers right and mainly it's just about yasuke kind of you know finding himself back and becoming the badass um, samurai that he was you know years ago and widely revered for so yeah that's that's yasuke that's well i should say the sixth episode season of yasuke in a nutshell so um ricardo Honest thoughts on the show. Yeah, Honest thoughts on the I, I'll say I really wanted to love it, but I couldn't love it for a real simple reason. I really wanted something more grounded and realistic. That's it. Um, and the, the, okay. comparison, the comparison I make to it is Batman Ninja. Right? Not as bad as Batman yes. Ninja. Not as bad as Batman Ninja. Let's be clear about that. Not as bad yeah. as that. No, that's, no, that's just, just, just a cut for a bit, right? No, no. I was thinking... I was hoping, I'm a fingers crossed that it wasn't going to lean to that to that territory. Because what we had said um, with our review way back when was that it took everything that you pretty much hate about anime, all the right. over the topness, all the yeah. big gigantic. The, it, it, uh, and, I don't know and, what to call it. I just call it. I just call it. I just call it. I just call it either Japanisms or Nipponisms. But that basically what it was. It's just a Nipponism. It's just a bunch yeah. of like ideas I don't like. A bunch of shit that this was odd. Yeah, but in this case, though, I, I, would, I wouldn't lie, though. They were kind of leaning a little too hard. In it. Like, okay, we're, we're, we're doing fantasy, but we have to do this, and we have to do right. all these things, because you know, that's yeah, part by of time, Japanese anime fantasy. Yeah, but, but like, like, I say, by time, yeah, by time I see, by time it had a robot in it, I was like, yeah, you're serious, right? Like, again, let us compare to Neo, where if it was reliant on just magic and folklore, I wouldn't have mind. But they have a robot in this, right? Like, what are robot doing there, Jared? And like, there's no... Rhyme or reason to it, it just it just, it just kind of happens. And it, it just it just happened to have have artificial intelligence technology in you know the the seventeenth to sixteenth century or whatever whenever the time was right. 
Yeah, uh, yeah. There's a little frustration. Well, well to be, be fair, honest. to be fair, there's this one kind of throwaway line where Nobunaga says, um, "You know, these these invaders had you know this mech technology, and we defeated them somehow, and we took that technology." That's like the only bit of info you get into. <laughs> but then the question is, like, you, you see them come in ships, so like, how the fuck they get on ships? Like, how do you even happen? So how? How, do you have, how, how do you make technology exist in the first place? You're talking about computer. You see, the thing had a hard, you know, like if it's the 21st yes. century, so, like yeah. it's futuristic I, tech that we don't have, we don't have yet, you know, whatever. Yeah, whatever and, like, and, and, if, and what I say, what I say about the, about the robot, and you're seeing like a literal like number and logo on the shoulder part of like, okay, yeah, so that come from whatever. a factory, but exactly. anyway. <laughs> yeah, but but you see, as I said, like okay, let us compare it to Neo. Neo is is magic, right? It it's it's all this this magical stuff and demons and the folklore of Japan in the context of Japanese history. So if they did that, that would have been fine. Um, or if they did something very realistic and grounded, right? As in, oh, it's the actual guy's life, and they do something, and then they maybe embellish something. You do a couple of embellishments for the sake of the story, like like Tom Cruise and the, the Last Samurai, something like that, right? Mm. If they did that, I would have been fine. Or if they did, even if they did just the magical stuff, I would have been fine. But what they do here was just so, again, too many nipponisms that pull it down for me. With that said, I still liked it enough. It was fine. It was, you know, decent enough animation. And a combat, uh, Flying Lotus, Royal Save It. Like, if it was with Flying Lotus, I would, have, I would have probably hate this a lot more. But yeah, that's that soundtrack. I, I agree. Is, I totally that song agree is, with you. Yeah, the soundtrack is goddamn fire. It was really good. Like, I, I'm really going to look out for the soundtrack now. As the kids say, it slaps, right? So, it slaps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. so I, I was I, I was enjoying a lot of it. The production is good. Like, I, I didn't mind. It have the typical normal anime problems with respect to, um, you know, when you're, you know, when you're, you, you have these animation, when you, I forget what you call it, when, uh, how anime, animators go, is go by doubles, I think, in terms of how it is operates. Mm. So, whatever, it's little stuff like that. And that was it. I, I didn't mind it. Uh, it looked great. Backgrounds looked great. Story was okay. I, I didn't love the story. It was, I find it was a little too much about the girl over him. Over him. But whatever, it's fine. It's still his story too. Um, but I didn't, I didn't hate any of it as it is. With that said, you know, so I didn't mind overall. Uh, but I really, really was disappointed. That, that's all I'll say. Didn't hate it. Just was really disappointed. Right. right. Well, uh, uh, well, I understand. Well, all right. So I would say that I wasn't as disappointed as I imagine you would do, but to be honest, I did expect more from it. Um, and it's not because of the the sub. Well, in a way, it is about the. It is because of the subject material itself. Like I'm not saying it have to be this overly epic, you know, series and whatnot, right? But you know, for what they go in for, now, I felt they could have gone a lot, a little, a little lot, a little deeper, right? Yeah. Um, the two shows that. I was thinking about while I was watching this, though. Um, well, you probably know what they are already, right? Um, Samurai Champloo as one. Um, that's just off the music itself, right? Yeah. And, you know, the kind of, oh, we're going to use, you know, old school visuals. We're going to use, like, you know, the century, but we're going to have characters, you know, talk, you know, contemporary. Right, that, uh, that kind I, of I, 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 what do you call it? Um, I forget the term for it. I forget the uh, term as well, yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, anachronistic. That's right. That That's the yeah. word. That's the word, right. But I was also thinking about... Um, Afro Samurai, right? right? right. Which yeah. also was this weird blend of sci-fi, yeah, sorry, they, they sci-fi got, and they got the fantasy same, and, you know, yeah, they got, samurai I think they got, elements. Uh. Yeah, I think they got the same showrunner. I forget the guy's name, but he's like a guy who does a lot of black anime stuff. So he did he did, did work on Afro Samurai, did work on Boondocks. Um, oh, right, right, right. Well, well, the director himself, um, LaShawn Thomas. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, so they, they got the same guy. It, was, it looked good. I can't be mad at it. No, um, no, it, it's a very, yeah, it's a very, yeah, very, yeah. very look, um, good-looking show. Um, yeah, exactly. Not, not perfect. I mean, it's, it's you know, a little, um, little, I should say, um, cutting corner part here or there, but it, uh, it, yeah, it looks bit, yeah. really, really good, though. Um, and I'll say the same thing about the visuals itself, right? You know, um, they're very, very distinct, very, very colorful, right? Very kaleidoscopic, that's, that's all I'll say. Yeah. And it fits with the whole, I would say, surrealist vibe of the show itself right um exactly. but yeah, yeah but just going back to the afro samurai thing because yeah you know we, well i mentioned you know samurai and you know um um fancy elements but it also had you know um sci-fi elements as well you know i mean there was i remember this one machine character in it as well too but it's one of those like scenarios where you don't really question it it's just 
oh, let's just have yeah. this cool badass samurai with a big afro kill yeah, people. That's the thing. Right? That's the thing. In the case of afro samurai, it was it was just kind of its own thing and its own world. And be, but because Yasuke is a historical figure, it just kind of throw you off now. That that's the only thing I'll say about it. That's why I, right. I don't... exactly yeah yeah. Right. So but 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 to get to what you're saying with um, with that with that aspect, I I totally agree. Because yeah, I mean it's it's history, right? And that um. I mean, if you didn't want to go the the Rooney Kenshin route, where you know we have to make you believe that everything that took that takes place here really did happen, even when you had characters doing over the top uh, moves, exactly. that, you know. That, that's, but that's what I wanted. Yeah, I wanted something more to that now, mm-hmm. in that sense, in that vein. Like I didn't yeah. want. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah you're right, right. Right. I wanted something more in the vein of of, of Wandering Samurai. Right. It's 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 not um it's not that it's not um totally realistic or super realistic but you know you have a workable sense of embellishment right exactly you, you, you yeah. believe it you buy into a majority of what you're seeing like you could believe oh well Kenshin was there when this guy got assassinated I talk about the right, um right. The Shishio well. arc, right right, right yeah, all that right. stuff right but yeah um I, I felt yeah you're right you, you really should have gone there and it's almost I don't want to say this against the show but it's almost like they weren't confident enough that that would have that would have worked Right, so right. let's throw all these fantastical stuff at you. Our the the, the sell is that it's anime. Yo, don't yeah. you like this? Don't yeah. you like to see um characters like like um oh gosh I, I forget what you call these um these oh gosh these priests basically and they have like the sort of like um pages with the like um oh gosh calligraphy written on it and they. Be able to do all these magical powers. I think it's um on, on meal, on meal priest. So that's why I yeah. understand. Right. Yeah. That's why I understand. Yeah. Let, let, let's, have, you, let's have those characters be the reason, in the show. I get the only reason I'm knowing that because I play I play neo religious. Right. right. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, it, it catch me because like, wait, we doing this too. You know, because yeah. even if you don't know the who they actually are, like like I don't know them per se, right? Or what the term that they, you you describe them, you've seen them before, like in numerous anime, right? And that's that's the thing that really brought this show down for me. It's that you see so much familiar things in it. You know what I mean? You have to have the giant mechs because it's an anime. You yeah. have to have the the demon who's in the 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 chamber area and there's like a lot right. of spider webs and it must look right. like a spider because it's anime, right? right? You've seen these things before. <laughs> and you just they're like, all right, I could I could kind of buy into this. I could kind of just shut my brain off and just roll with it. But at the same time, you, you kind of wonder, well, if the character is real, then why why take that route then? You know what I mean? Un- unless unless you want to kind of hint at something bigger. You know, like, I should say, basically establish the world itself. Like, establish the realism. And then eventually, you jump yeah. into the weird stuff. No, this right. jumps in from the beginning. From the from beginning, the yeah. First yeah. minute, I'm like, whoa, okay. Yeah. Dial it back, dial it back, dial it back. So it's a lot, right? Um... Also, I do agree with you, though. I felt that it should have been more about Yasuke and his journey. Um, it literally is about this girl. And I mean, I understand in, in anime, you always have to have, you know, that, that one secondary character to get the ball rolling when you're all there by yourself. But it's like... Yeah. No, but I mean, it, it, it's fine. Uh, it's fine because he's the guardian character. That's fine. Like, yeah, I don't, yeah. That's fine. You know, I didn't have a big, big problem with it. It's still his story, in a sense. So it's like, well... Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, I, I will admit, though, um, even with, with six episodes, um, I felt that it could have gone a little longer, just like a, like a couple more episodes, because I felt okay. like, all right, we were, we were going, we were showing where, or keep cutting back, as you say, to where Yasuke's journey stopped at the point in time. And we bring in all these villains and all that kind of stuff. And there's literally, I believe, in the, between the fourth and the fifth episode, right? I feel like there was like a jump though. Like I like I get what where where the characters are introduced in episode five. But I feel like there was just something that was just taken out. And all of a sudden we now going up against the Daimyo and all these big yeah. this big gigantic army. Yeah, I feel like it, it, it something first, was yeah, literally it, missing yeah, in that first, moment. Yeah, the first and second half would just feel like two separate things, like two separate, you know, OVAs. That's what it feels yeah. like. Like that's what it feels like. It, it does feel like two OVAs stitched together, narrative wise. Yeah. Yeah, so and um, also, yeah, yeah. What I would say though, just just quickly, just before we get to the, the good, right? Um, the villain, like the first villain that we see, the um, the the Catholic guy, right? The priest. Yeah. I was like, they they basically wrapped that that episode. They basically wrapped that that arc up halfway into the season, and I'm like, okay. And you know, they, they in the process, there's these goons that you know, like the robot, for example, that we we keep bringing up that there, and they don't really get any backstory. We don't really know. 
why they did they just like hired tugs basically that's all we know and then you know in the in the last like i should say the fifth episode where the big war starts they, they come back and they're like well all right yeah, well yeah. why do okay why we, you, you give us enough reason for us to care there's literally one character who dies in a gruesome way like genuinely yeah. and i was still like i i don't really care don't mind i mm. really like the character i like the look of the character that's all i say i like the powers that this character have but when the character dies, i was just like well yeah don't really care you know what i mean i would say though yes you're right the Stephen grace of this show was flying lotus um, uh, music yeah. and here's the thing eh? so just a little backstory quick backstory right when the second episode drop, and then you hear the team song, right? The team song I want to focus on, right? Which is um, Black Gold, right? Which is performed by Thundercat. Like the moment I right. saw the visuals and I heard the song, here we do it. it. It literally put me back to when going real old school, eh? Anime City. Yeah. At one Anime City that I'll never forget, which took place in Port of Spain, I believe it was. Where I saw Samurai Champloo for the first time in my life. Okay. The moment when Battle Cry comes in, right? And you know, each episode starts off like that, right? Yeah. I, it was something that I never heard before in an anime. Because normally you hear like, you know, J pop songs and rock songs, right? But this was right, the first right. time I ever heard hip hop in an anime, right? Right. And not just so I, I, uh... hip hop, but more chill weave hip hop chill and i was right, like exactly wow, that, you know what that, lo-fi, yeah. that lo-fi song and yeah, yeah that's a whole that's a whole a whole culture because it's is i discovered you discovered new Javis through that um you me know too, me too yeah exactly yeah. Dude, um, it's that, that whole the, that whole part the, yeah dude the the, the samurai champ blue soundtracks i don't know if they were for you those were studying music for me huh? Back when yeah. I was in well, I, I don't, I don't that, that, that was my study. I don't know if that's, that's a big working cliche, right? You know, you, you see that one girl studying on YouTube for, for 10 hours or whatever it is, right? Yep. yep, um, yep. <laughs> but that, 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 I never get into that in terms of study. But yeah, I, I kind of understand why you might, yeah. Mm. No, because it's just so chill and laid back, and it's just like, all right, now I could uh, now, now, now I could write that essay. Now I could do that research. So yeah, that was one of my go-to, you know, that that's really what got me into instrumentals, like hip-hop instrumentals and just seeking them out now. So yeah, when I heard that song, though, it took me to that, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I wasn't in love with it at first, sir. Eh? Like right. it's very, it's very Fly Lotus, right? And then when you hear the Thundercat vocals, they're very Thundercat, right? Yeah. But uh, it, it took my, it took my out of it a little bit because I felt like, okay, well, if we go in grim, if we go in dark, if we go in surreal, all right, the music has a surrealist vibe to it, right? But why are we going this route, this vibey route? Like you take yeah. it, oh, I can just kind of relax and chill when I know people are gonna get killed, you know, in the next scene. You know what I mean? But over the course of the series, it just clicked with me. It just worked. And it just it just kind of reminded me of like what Lu- uh, Flying Lu- Lotus was doing behind the scenes. Shit. Just more or less giving you this sort of calm, laid back music. Shit. And it yeah. works. Like you even listen to the music, the, the soundtrack, sorry, after watching the film. And like, yeah, it, it clicks, right? And I would say, just to close things off, it, it fits in terms of all the weirdness that takes place. It just kind of lays its foundation so yeah with all the weird stuff and all the bright colors and all that kind of stuff it, it fits it feels like this fever dream that you're watching here and just that team so that black goal is just like yeah, yeah. just lulling you into that vibe you know what i mean and it it, it maintains it so i'll just say in general it it um yeah he he really ex he really elevated this material dread i would say it's similar to like what um new Jabez did with um samurai champloo right yeah. and um suchi whoever uh yeah suchi that's the other producer yeah. and yeah. yeah what Rizzo did for for afro samurai right there's that dark right um sort of dark lo-fi music and last thing i'll say though what, what I, I really think that that it was a great call on on uh, flying lotus's part though because yeah you know i mean when you look up chill wave or vapor wave video what was the first thing you see not a loop of a of a of a of a shot from an enemy. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So yeah, it, it just he just he just picked that perfectly and just fed into it. So I would say even though the show is problematic um tone wise and story wise, um I do have a feeling that this is gonna this is gonna be a, 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 a cult favorite, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I Shorty, I like people are gonna go back to it mainly because of that music. I think that music is gonna let it live on more, you know. Yeah, I could see younger people like enjoying it for what it is. Like, you know, like, I I didn't have any uh, major problems with it as it was, just well well made. Um, 
yeah, yeah, I could see people enjoying this. I, I can't tell it. I can't tell you didn't like it, but I, I wanted something a little more grounded, or at least a little more in, less less nipponisms, as it were, right? That yeah, yeah, to, totally it. agree. Yeah, that that really really brought it down. And just like I said before, I felt it was just like we we just not confident in what it is we're doing here. You really could have gone a little bit um. You know, deeper into the into the source material, because I would say I don't really know anything about Yasuke, and they could have they could have done that, right? Right. But if you want to bring any fantastical stuff, okay. But just give us a kind of balance, right? Don't just jump in and throw all this stuff, and now yeah. I can't believe a single thing that's going on. Um, well, because I saw the the English dub, I would say that uh, it was it was decent for what it is. Um, I thought that the Keith Stanfield was was fine. He wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Great. I, well, I, well, yeah. When I did, I, I listened to both versions. That is the first episode. Mm. Um, and what were you thought about his uh, vocal? Yeah, he was fine. Look, he was fine. But I I, I, I still prefer the Japanese voice actor. So it's like well. All right. Well, um, I, I guess if I if I watch it over, um, which I'll I'll get to that in the end. Um, I'll 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 listen it um in the, with the with the Japanese um dub. Um, the supporting actors I thought they were pretty good as well. Um, well I actually realized that the guy who voiced um Nobunaga actually did the Japanese and English voices. So that was really cool. So I love that there were moments where yeah you were hearing Japanese characters or you know they could actually get like the Japanese accent down good even though they're talking English right. Yeah. And yeah, I mean, for what it is, I you know it's it's good for what it is though. Um, the the music does really make it um, unique and the visuals itself. But like I said, Ricardo is just the nipponisms that that really brought it down. Though, and I felt and I would just say though, if there weren't too much of them, even people who not into anime, like people who just want to see the show on Netflix because it's you know TVMA, right? As a as an anime show, um, show, right? I think they would have they would have enjoyed it even more if it wasn't for all this weird over the top stuff, right? Um, but yeah, I I would like to see. Um, well, yeah, I I would say this this needs to have a a, a season two. Um, but I really do hope that they, they just improve on the storytelling and just the, yeah. the characterization and, and really give us more of Yasuke and, you know, why we should really, like, give a shit about him, right, ultimately. But, yeah, um, rated wise for what it's worth, I'll give this, I like the decent show of five, man. It's it's right for what it is. Um, yeah. I would say this is more for the anime fans. Like, anime fans will really get, get with us, right? People who not really into anime will just be baffled at everything that takes place. But imagine even even anime fans will still kind of want to say, like, okay, what? You know what I mean? Like, it's not hard to follow, right? But it just goes visually and totally all over the place to yeah it's a little it, it, you can't help but feel um like it feels the the, the sorry the the, the the plot itself will feel um convoluted at times and yeah. because it don't really explain things it's kind of tell you what well, this is how it is you know a, a robot exists in this world because it's an anime right it's just like well still then why have the robot in the full space right yeah little stuff like that yeah no yeah, yeah you're, you're, but I, yeah i mean I, check I it out check it out yeah right yeah no I, I totally line up with almost everything you're seeing i don't it's it's clumsy, you know, in terms of storytelling. It doesn't come together as well as it could. But I still enjoyed for what it was. It was still a decent enough project um, as it is. So I can't be mad at any of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well what, what what's your well, final thoughts on Rita? Yeah, 7 out of 10, reluct- well, I should say 6, but reluctant 7, if anything, right? Okay, it's, okay. It's fine. I don't have a big, big problem with any of it. Um, I, I, But as I said, they could have, it's one of those that they could have, just take a little effort and step it up a little bit by and doing certain things. But that's more an approach issue, right? Not really a, you know, not a, not necessarily a, a unforced error. Like they clearly made these decisions. But I felt, I felt that if it was more grounded and realistic, I would have enjoyed it a lot more. But it was still fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, last thing I will say though, um, well, fortunately there is room for improvement. So yeah. I, I really would like to see um a second season, one right. with more episodes. So I feel that they do it the the Castlevania role. We're just gonna give L T S for this three right. hours. That's a nice, that's a nice give L three hours and then next season we're gonna hit your full six, full six um full six hours um uh, on you, right? And then you'll just sort of flesh things out and bring in more characters and make make sense of things, right? And hopefully, Flying Lotus will bring more, more wavy beats for us to just buy for to it. But yeah, I, I, I am serious. I do see this becoming like a cult favorite. Like the you know, people are just gonna go back to this. I want to see people. I mean, anime fans. This is gonna go back to this just because of the, of the soundtrack itself. And yeah, yeah I keep bringing up soundtrack. Yes, the soundtrack is dope. I reviewed it on my IG account. 
y'all should check it out yeah, well check the album out for sure but yeah I would say again if you're an anime fan yeah give this a watch man but um, gotta keep your expectations low like this is not gonna be this groundbreaking anime or anything that it's, it's fine for what it is right yeah hey this is Matthew Bailey and I hope you've enjoyed this segment of the BS Beats and Bailey podcast if you'd like to hear the full episode hit up my link tree on the other side of my head are two videos you can check out like this video if you like it feel free to subscribe and hit the bell as well Thanks for listening and until the next one, take care, peace.